Hey Beer Summit, it's Max from FOMO Prescription and I'm here live outside the castle. You can see it right behind me. Check-in has started. A lot of people have already headed in. I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna show you what's going on. Um, just a little bit about me. My name's Max. I'm from FOMOPrescription.com and I help young professionals cure FOMO by hosting events in the city focused on their career, social, and health goals. So come check out our free newsletter at FOMOPrescription.com. Let's go head in and taste some beer. All right, so we're heading here's Russ from Beer Summit. <laughs> You're gonna check in here. You gotta grab your cup. Thank you. All right, let's head off to get our first beer. So, we just got in. We got WAF right behind us. We got all this beer for me to get through. So we're gonna check. Uh, let's go to Tab Brewing first, okay? Hey guys, how's it going? You are live on the Beer Summit live stream on Facebook. How's it going today? Good, good. good. All right, we actually got a microphone for you. So, uh, what are we drinking? So we have our uh, Solar Plexus Double IPA. It's our flagship. Uh, we've got our Berliner Weiss Intergalactic Acid and our American Light Lager Maze Fair. Okay, so where are you guys based out of? Uh, we're based out of Haverhill, Massachusetts. Oh, awesome! Local place. Yep. All right. So, what was like the first beer you guys produced, and like what's like your flagship now? So. The flagship right now is our Solar Plexus Double IPA. Okay. Um, we just started canning everything about six months ago, back in November. Okay. Uh, we do this every single month, and then intermittently change out a couple of brands. So. Okay. For the people at home that don't know what a double IPA is, what, what's the difference between an IPA, a double IPA, and like how is it made? Um, so a double IPA is, uh, or an imperial IPA, has more alcohol, more hops, um, this one in particular, though, leans a little more towards the newer thought process of the New England style. Okay. Where very light bitterness, so even though we're super high on our IBUs, it all comes on the back end. Okay. So we're talking I, I be, about I be, uh, what was IBUs. That? Yeah, let's try International some. bittering units. Okay. So what, if we look on a can and it says IBUs, what does a higher number mean and what does a lower number mean? Um, Old school thought process, higher number is going to mean that it's uh, much more bitter. Okay. Nowadays, especially if you find something here in New England that's got a higher IBU rating, you're actually going to get a ton of flavor out of it. So yeah, it's most not, people not are bitter. gearing. Yeah, most people are gearing more towards the whole flavor end of the hops. Um, we dry hop this absolutely crazy amounts of dry hops. Big ripe mango character, um, a nice candied orange flavor. And uh, drinks a little more like a 6%, even though it's 9% ABV. So oh, we're in trouble. This is the <laughs> yep. first beer of the day. It's good. I like it. I'm not even a big IPA person. It's very tasty. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Nice to meet you guys. Actually, if you want to just clip that back to the wire. All right. We're going to move on to our next uh, vendor. Conveniently enough, it's right next door. Actually, we got to finish this one first. So. So that was Tap Brewing. They're right here in the front. I'm gonna grab some swag from them. We're gonna try City Brewing next. How's it going, guys? Good, how are you? Good, we're doing the live face, uh, Facebook live stream. So say hello to the Beer Summit page. What's up, guys? How are you? All right, so we're with, what's the name of this brewery? Greater Good Brewing Company. Okay, so here, first let me give you the uh, microphone so uh, people can hopefully hear you. you just hold it. Um, tell us where you guys are based out of, what you're doing. Uh, we're uh, all, uh, America's first all imperial brewing company. Um, we contract right now to Williamsburg, Mass, uh, Brewmaster's Tavern, and opening up a spot in Worcester, tap room. Um, Hopefully uh, within the next couple months. Oh, that's exciting. So you yeah. guys are up to a lot of stuff. So tell us about what you're brewing and what's exciting right now. Um, exciting new beer is uh, Pulp. So it's an 8% uh, IPA. We use lupulin powder in it. Okay. Um, 
Our uh, biggest selling beer is uh, our 12% uh, New England style IPA. Is that this right yeah. here? Yeah, right. it's called Greylock. 12% right there. So how many, you have one of those and you're gonna have a good afternoon. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. All right, cool, let's try something. Yeah, here's, uh, here's the pulp. Cheers. All right, I'll give you that back. All right. So we're trying, again, this is a, say it again. This is an 8% uh, New England style IPA with lupulin powder in it. Uh, mosaic and citra hops. Interesting, it's got a unique, uh, what's that like flavor on the back then? I don't know how to describe it, but it's good. It's like kind of like fruity, citrusy. Yeah, it's uh, the citra hops and the mosaic blend. Another good beer, guys. So uh, this is the first two we got. I think 38 more to go. There you go. <laughs> so we're gonna have a good afternoon. Um, so how did how did you get this uh, brewery started? Um, I'm just I'm the I'm the head brewer. Uh, the owner's gonna be here a little bit later. Okay. Um, he was an avid home brewer. He wanted to start a company. Um, found me. I was working over at uh, Rap Sky Brewing Company and uh, for for years over there. It's a good spot. And uh, the guy found me and we hooked up and we're making some good beers. Awesome. No, it's very tasty. Thank you very much. Cheers. I appreciate right, it. Cheers. Enjoy. See you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to move on to the next brewery. How's the sound at home? Let's hear If you're watching live right now, does the sound sound good? We're trying a new microphone system. Give me a hello in the comments section. We have Guinness right here. This is just to the left of when you walk in. We have the Mighty Squirrel. We have Revival. We got White Lion. We'll do a quick walk around. Hey, what's going on? If you're watching, say hello below in the comment section. Just give me a quick hi. We're on the back side now of the venue. Back corner, Beans Brewer. We got uh, Down East, local favorite, 14th star. And if you're wondering who I am, my name's Max. I'm from FOMOPrescription.com. I'm doing a live stream takeover of the Beer Summit page. FOMO Prescription is an awesome resource for young professionals aged 22 to 30, where we help young professionals cure FOMO by hosting events focused on their career, social, and health goals. So what does that mean? We're gonna have a workshop series coming up in the next six months to help you with career goals. We also do a free newsletter, which, highlights the seven most interesting events in the city, all focused around career, social, and health events. So check that out. We're gonna jump in to grab some more beers here. We're gonna go over to, uh, looks like Hidden Cove. Put around for you. So we're doing a uh, Facebook live stream for Beer Summit. Say hello to, uh, we gotta flip it around first. <laughs> All right, we're here with Hidden Cove Brewing. You can grab the microphone there so people can hear you at home. Okay. Tell us about where you guys are located and what you guys are producing. Okay, we're uh, from Wells, Maine. Uh, today we have our booty. It's a Belgian style golden ale with uh, flavored with fresh raspberries. Uh, we also have our, our flagship IPA, Patroon. Very fruit forward, not a lot of lingering bitterness. Um, and we also have our summer ale, which is a uh, uh, golden ale uh, that we brew with Meyer lemon peel and honey. All right, so where should we, where should we start at this tasting? Uh, if you're gonna do all three, I would start with the summer. Okay, we'll do a little pour of the summer. So here, let's show them the can. That's good. Thank you. All right, so this is a summer golden ale. What, for the people at home, what's a golden ale? Well, it's just, it's a basic, um, it's, a, it's a wheat ale, basically, um, that we uh, add Meyer lemon peel and honey to in the brewing process. Very subtle on the citrus. Um, yeah, it's bright. Just a, enough sweetness at the end, you know? 
4%, great uh, golf beer, lawn mowing, sitting by the pool, on the beach. It definitely is that beer. Like the beach, I could see this being yeah. really refreshing. Definitely. It's nice and light and crisp. Yeah. Okay. So uh, what do we got next? Next we have our, uh, we call Booty, uh, the Pirate's Booty. Uh, it's a Belgian style golden uh, that we flavor with fresh raspberries. Definitely a raspberry beer. So when, when's a good time to crack open one of these beers? Uh, one of these, again, summertime, perfect, on the beach, by the pool, you know, out boating, you know. All right, great. Thank you very much for us showing us uh -huh. all the beers over at uh, That was Hidden Cove. All right, we're going to move on. We're going to jump across to uh, Treehouse Brewing. They're right across the way. A lot of hype coming from this brewery. We're gonna we're gonna do a quick dump out first, all right? Or else this live stream I'm not gonna last very long. So we're heading over. I'm I'm Max from FOMOPrescription.com. I host a free newsletter which highlights the seven most interesting events focused on young professionals, career, health, and social goals. And we're gonna check out Treehouse Brewing. Okay, they're out of Monson, Massachusetts. Let's flip around here. How's it going? Are you guys pouring beer? 130. Okay. 130 Monson Brewing, I mean Treehouse Brewing Company out of Monson. We'll stop back. That's okay, there's tons of beers here. We're on the back side right now. This is Rhine Heist. That's Castle Island. Don't forget, 5.30 session two, so you have plenty of time to get down here. There's so many beers. Over 40 brewers. We got a little corner down here too. And we got VTs. Give me a low in the comments section. Let's see who's out there. You guys want some barbecue? Look at this barbecue. Barbecue. So we're gonna head over to Lord Hobo right now. Grab the microphone. How's it going, man? We're doing a live stream on Facebook and the Beer Summit page. Oh, cool, man. Here, I'm gonna give you this microphone so people can hear you at home. What's your name? Uh, John. John. So uh, what what do you do at Lord Hobo? Uh, I do sales for Lord Hobo. Nice. Boston South. So you can catch me all, all around the Seaport South the area okay. a lot of times. Cool. Now you guys have just exploded. It kind of, correct me if I'm wrong, I went to UMass Amherst. This started out in Amherst, correct? Uh, and then you guys opened yeah, the so, restaurant. Well, so the owner, owner has owned uh, Moan and Dove and the Dirty Truth. Yep. Uh, he opened up Lord Hobo Bar seven years ago, uh, and then two years ago he opened up the brewery out of kind of frustration of you know these these limited beers that come in and out, in and out, and you really can't keep it on draft. So he wanted he wanted to create something that you know is available to everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, beer is the most affordable luxury in the world. Right, it so is. So everyone should have access to it, especially good beer. That's what it's all about. Okay, so what are we going to be tasting today at the Beer Summit? We have Glorious, our Galaxy Hop Pale Ale. Okay. It's our newest beer, 6.5%. We have Boom Sauce, our flagship double IPA. Let's let's show them the title. Okay. That's the one in the middle, the Boom That's Sauce. The one in the middle, Would you yeah. say it was a double IPA? Yeah, I mean, we kind of just call it an IPA, but it's 7.8. It is over that 7.5 threshold. Okay. And then we have Steel This Can, our West Coast IPA. Okay. Uh, you got a nice little bitterness in the finish, 6.5%. All right, for the people at home, what's a West Coast IPA? We already talked about double IPA at one of the other booths, so yeah. what's a West Coast IPA? So West Coast, uh, typically you get nice grapefruit flavors out of it. Uh, you have a nice long-lasting bitterness in the finish. I always find that West Coast are typically between 6 and 7.5%. This is 65 
Uh, right. But obviously, they can go into the double range, too. Okay. So where should we start the flight? Uh, you should start at Glorious. Okay, sure. here. I'll take that microphone. You take my cup, and uh, sure. away we go. How's everyone doing at home? Come on up. 5.30 is the second session. There's still tickets available. You go to Beer Summit. Dot com. My name is Max. I'm from FOMOPrescription.com. We're doing a takeover of the live stream. I'm drinking Lord Hobo right now. I'm sorry, which which style is it? This is Glorious. It's a Galaxy Hop Pale Ale. So, you know, it's uh, pretty much just Galaxy Hops. It's delicious. And it's fruity. It's, pal it's uh, got a nice soft fruitiness to it. And not a lot of bitterness. Yeah, I was gonna say, if, if you guys if you guys are like get a little intimidated by very hoppy things, this has like the nice hoppy flavor without being super bitter. It's it's Absolutely. very relaxed. Yeah, it's uh you know it's that beer that everyone's been chasing for three, three four years now. Really <laughs> like soft fruits, not a lot of bitterness, six and a half percent, and that's uh that's where every uh, it seems like every drinker is right around there. That's their ideal beer. I like it. So if you want to get this Lord Hobo beer, where can people get it? So we're we're uh, we're officially in ten states now. We're in uh, we're in all of New England. We're in Delaware. Okay. We're in Denver, and now we're in Florida. Oh wow! So you can get, and we're we have uh, a lot of like retail distribution all over the city of uh, the state of Massachusetts. Okay. Um, all major liquor stores. You know. Pretty much everywhere, man. I, I, I'll tell you what. I saw um, Lord Hobo's at one of my favorite spots, Stoke Pizza. So they, yeah. you can go there. You can get the best pizza in Boston. Little known fact. Most people think Pizza Regina and, uh, and uh, Santarpio's. Check out Stoke Pizza. And you can get a Lord Hobo beer. So you can't really yeah. beat that combo. Yeah, I believe you can get Hobo Life there uh, and steal this can. See? It's his spot. He knows. I know. I know. It's <laughs> Let's good get pizza. some boom sauce going. Yeah. Boom saw 7.8 percent. You see a pretty uh, golden color. Yeah, nice glowing golden color. Uh, very tropical. I get lots of hints of pineapple and peach and mango from it. All right, we gotta we gotta fill this man's cup yeah. right now. Take a break. You got it. That's what I'm drinking right now. Say hello to the uh, Facebook fan page for Beer Summit. Hey. Cheers. Cheers. Cool. Yeah, so Boom Sauce is our most popular beer, and we sell a lot of it. <laughs> we just went through an expansion at our brewery. Uh, we brewed about 15,000 barrels last at, by the end of last year. Wow, that's a lot. Uh, we added six new tanks that will increase our, our uh, capacity to a potential of 35,000 barrels in a year. Uh, where I don't know if you just said it, but where are you producing it again? Uh, Wooper. All right, so another nice local place, guys. Um, I think we already knew that, but Woburn, just north of Boston, 20 minutes. Yep. Boom sauce. <laughs> That's right. All right, thanks, my man. Hey, no problem. We'll see you out there. Hey, cheers. <laughs> so we got a great start here at the Beer Summit Session 1. We're just cruising around here, a lot of good brewers. Um, they're going to have another session at 5.30, so if you want to come, there's still plenty of tickets. Go to beersummit.com. Come hang out, drink some beers, okay? Where should we go next? Hard Cider? Lookout Farms, okay? Give us a hello in the comments section, all right? Hey guys, how's it going? We got the uh, Beer Summit Facebook live stream going right now. We're with the Lookout Farms crew. We're, uh, here, I'm gonna give uh, the microphone to whoever wants to be the spokesperson. The only person working here. She's pouring all the cider. The only person doing anything, yes. What's up, Facebook land? How's it going? This is So this is the Beer Summit Facebook page, say hello. Hey. We're with the Lookout Farms uh, hard cider crew. So tell us about uh, your hard cider, what's unique about it. So our hard cider is unique uh, because we are one of the oldest continually operating farms in the United States. We've been around since 1651. So all of our cider is made from our apples on the farm and along with most of our ingredients. So we're local, we're fresh, and we're unique. 
So where where's the farm? Farm is in Natick, Massachusetts. Okay, so right there, it's local. Yep. Is this one of those farms that people might be apple picking at and not even know that there's cider coming out of it? 100%. That's what a lot of people say. Their first reaction is, oh my God, there's a tap room there? We've been there to apple pick. We've been there to do other things. We never knew there was a tap room. So guess what? We have a tap room. So okay. come out and see us. So tell us about your cider. What's unique about it? It looks like you guys have a couple different kinds. Yeah, we have quite a few varieties. We have a lot of rotating small batch we do. Here, I'm going to show you guys what they're pouring right yep. now. So what's on the left there? So on the left, we have our Hop Up, which is kind of an, you've heard of an India, India Pale Ale. This is an India Pale Cider. So we've got two different kinds of hops in it, which gives it a nice, gentle, fruity flavor. Uh, in the middle is our Farmhouse Blend. This is our flagship cider. It's uh, traditional semi-dry, so not too dry, not too sweet. Okay. And here on the right, we have our First American Cherry, which is our Farmhouse Blend infused with cherries from Washington State. Now, like uh, cherry has kind of been like a, a go-to combination yeah. in yeah. cider. Is that just it's it's a natural combination? It, it just goes works? well. It okay. goes well. You can kind of you can temper it to be as strong or as gentle okay. as you want it to be. All right. So, so here I'm gonna take the microphone from her and we're gonna we're gonna drink some cider. All right. Let's. Okay, for you. Where should we start in this flight? What so is? I would recommend that you start with our farmhouse blend and you end with our barn burner. Okay. There's the cup. <laughs> You can see it's nice, clear, very pale. The best thing about our cider is there's no added sugar and there's no added preservatives. Our cider is all natural, naturally gluten-free, and 100% organic. Okay, so this is a very light cider. It's this when you think of cider, you're probably thinking sweet. This is not sweet at all. It's very balanced. It's very nice. If you don't like horribly sweet cider. This is the cider for you. I like it a lot. It's good. very good. Good. I'll tell you what, I had a cider epiphany and it happened about two months ago and ever since I've been really into cider. So if you haven't tried cider in a while, I definitely recommend you get back out there. Especially with all the local craft uh, cider people like Lookout Farm. <laughs> Alright, so what are we going to try next? Alright, let's move on to Hop Up. So we're trying the... Um, Uh, so we have two types of hops in here. We've got El Dorado and Mosaic. So it kind of gives the cider a bit of a mango uh, passion fruit flavor. Uh, a lot of people are surprised to find hops in cider, and it's not very common. So, but it actually goes really, really well. There is one other producer doing it, but there's is I, I this is really unique. It's very complex. A lot of flavors going on in this. Yeah, it's awesome. It's one of my favorites. Where can actually. you find this? So this is being distributed all around Boston, all around Massachusetts. Uh, you can find it in a lot of bars. You can find it in a ton of packies. It's we're all growing. Right. We're getting. So there. we're gonna put a little more pressure on you. Where in Boston can we find it? <laughs> can, I, can I look? Yep. Can I cheat? She can cheat. She's gotta get her I book out. Cheat. Hold That's on. okay. Hold these on. these brands are in a lot of stores, a lot of locations. So no, I want to know. And and does it come in a four pack, six pack? What's the retail price? Uh, retail price, I think, averages out around ten ninety nine for a four pack. Okay. So you can find our bottles and our cans in four packs. Um, in bars, you can find it on draft, and we also have kegs and half kegs for purchase. Okay, so in, cer in certain stores. I really like that. that's really good. Isn't that good? I love that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, where in Boston are we talking? Because I got a bunch. Closest of to the castle. This is the castle. Uh, <laughs> Hey guys, so, so we're, right at, here. we're at the Beer Summit right now. I'm with Lookout Farms. We've got four people tuned in, which is really exciting. Um, come on out. 5.30 is the second session. There's still tickets available. Beersummit.com. Look at all and you our fans drink. lining up. Look all at right, that. Check this out. Check this out. Right Look now. at these cider fans. Woo! Woo! All these people <laughs> lining up. Come get they a well time. Drink. Yeah. They just want to drink. More right. people pouring. All right. More people <laughs> pouring. All right. So... Um, closest to the castle, so there's on Columbus Avenue, 474 Columbus Avenue. We've got been great. Uh, Columbus Avenue Liquor Group, uh, Wine Emporium too. Okay, yep, the Wine Emporium. Um, let's see, I have to go that's down. That's good. So go Another to the uh, urban, to uh, urban Grape South End also carries us, which yep, is right down on Columbus Avenue. Um, 
So there you go, hey guys. It's, oh, it's basically in most liquor stores in the South End because she just named the three on the yes. street. Yep. <laughs> and we're everywhere from Jamaica Plain down to Plymouth, all the way down to Attleboro, Yankee Spirits. We're in Providence, Pawtucket. Uh, we're working our way out to Western Mass in New Hampshire and Maine soon. So okay. stay tuned. Keep an eye out. If you don't see us at your liquor store, ask for it. Okay. And tell us about Natick. You said there's a tap room. Do you guys do events, tastings? You bet. We've got a tap room that is. Uh, we can rent that out for private event spaces. We also have yoga. We have boot camp. Uh, we have parties. So anything you can want to do, come on out and check it out. We've got food. We've got live music on Friday and Saturday nights from 6 to 8 with a bunch of great local bands. Uh, we've got snacks. We've got games. The tap room is also family friendly. So bring the kids for a great night. All right, guys. So a little detour from the Natick Mall. Go to Lookout Farm yeah. and get some know, cider. Come the Natick Mall. Come drink cider instead. Yeah, come drink cider. Trust me, you're going to like it. Yes. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, so that was Lookout Farm, really good stuff. The dry hop cider, delicious, delicious. Cider's going on a totally new path. If you haven't tried it recently, try it, nice and dry. Let's try Z Zilos Beer Company, all right? I'm gonna show you the booth. So here's the booth, the Zilos guys. They need some love, so we're gonna try out some of their beers. Hey guys, we're, we're live on the Beer Summit Facebook live stream. How's it going? Where are you guys based out of? Wakefield, Massachusetts. Wakefield? All right, hold on. Let me give you the microphone, actually. I'm sorry. There you go. Yeah, we're, we're based from Medfield, Massachusetts. Medfield, okay, local. What are you guys producing? Uh, we have two beers. We have um, Apricot Long Run, uh, Long Run Apricot Pale Ale, and then we also have a competitor IPA. Okay, so. Let's start with the pale ale. Okay. That's going to be tough holding the microphone. Well, I'm pouring, so it's not that tough. <laughs> so how long have you guys been producing for? Uh, we started distributing in February, February 1st this February year. February 1st of this year, so, so very new. This is very new? We may be the newest company here, I'm not sure. Oh, nice. You, I'm sorry, can you, wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> No, I have a microphone on my show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was trying to get stereo there. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you guys get started in the beer industry? Like, what made you want to produce an apricot pale ale? Well, the whole the whole concept was, um, you know, I'm a runner and a triathlete, and uh, we were. I was running one day, and I was like, why doesn't anyone produce a beer which would be good for after running, or you know, after exercise? So. That's how the whole concept came up. Okay, and is it because the apricot is more flavorful after you run, or? Well, I think both, both our beers here are meant to be refreshing. Okay. So we have a higher wheat content in them. They're also lower alcohol, so, you know, it, no one after doing exercise wants to drink something with high um, alcohol content. Okay, it. so perfect. So this is an after exercise. It's like Gatorade. When you're exercising, Gatorade tastes completely different. This, I'm sure, tastes different after a nice long run, huh? Yes, yeah. More refreshing. Yeah, spear is very refreshing after exercise. So. Okay, uh, as you know from FOMO description, I only walk through the uh, city as I announce the events in the morning, but we're going to have to crack open a... Say, how do you say the name? Zealous. Zealous. Yes. As a line over the E's, a hard E, so Okay, Zealous. hard E. Come visit them. 5.30, the second session starts. Plenty of tickets available. You can drink with my man. What's your name? Jeff. Jeff. He's got plenty of Zealots. We got plenty of Zealots for you. All right, cool. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. All right, so that was Zealots. We're hanging out, having some beers. A lot of great people here. All right, so we're gonna visit our next brewery here. See, I like this. It's called Three Beards Brewing, and all three guys from the company have beards. So they're on point. Let's check out what they got. How's it going, guys? We're, we're live on the Beer Summit live stream. <laughs> How's it going? It's not just a, not just a show here. No. <laughs> here, grab the mic. Hey. All right, so tell us where you guys are based out of and what you're producing. All right, so we're Three Beards Beer Company. Three based, Beards? That's yeah, right. I told, I gave yeah, him a preview. I was like, it's I was just standing us, over yeah. there, I was like, 
if they're gonna call their beer their company three beards and the guys pouring the beer <laughs> yeah we made sure they got it they're we true to brand sure. so that's right uh, out of Williamsburg up by UMass Amherst Northampton yes yeah we hey, have Williamsburg Where? I went to Williamsburg, UMass Amherst I, yeah. I, 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 I went out there I didn't go there but I went out there <laughs> yeah um, we have an IPA a Belgian pale ale and a stout awesome yep. all right so let's start with the lightest first right all right absolutely I'll give you a quick rinse on that All right, so we have some Western Mass love here. That's right. Look at this. So this is a Belgian pale ale brewed with rye. A uh, little bit of spice from the rye, and you'll taste that Belgian yeast as well. Okay, so because it's Belgian, does that just mean it's more of a yeasty? Right, that's the type of yeast used, and it's a unique yeast, and you'll know it right when you taste it. Somewhere like you'll taste it in... Uh, Blue Moon or a lot of wheat beers. It as is well. very similar body to a Blue Moon. This is a little bit more of a medium body. It's a little bit heavier than some of the other beers that we've had, but it's delicious. Nice. This is a Belgian pale ale, correct? That's correct. Okay. Yep. All right. Would you like a little bit of uh, IPA or stout next? Yeah, let's do um, the IPA next. All right, great. We're trying to get to all 40 here. While holding the phone, all forty. It's gonna be a. I don't know. If <laughs> it's we're gonna, gonna be a long it, day. But we got you on Facebook to keep us accountable. Awesome. <laughs> all right, this is the IPA. Let's see the bottle. Soft show me the. Show more. me the bottle. All right, so Cow Puncher IPA. Uh, Seven point nine ABV. Seventy four IBU. About more of like a New England IPA. They're calling it now more balanced instead of crazy hoppy. What, what does New England IPA yeah, mean? So that's, a, that's a new style and it's different than the West Coast IPA which is high hops, high alpha acids. And this is more citrus flavors with some malt to balance out those strong hops. Okay. So I think what we've seen, just so the people that keep keeping score at home, the West Coast ones are more fruity. New England, I mean... Some citrus and malt. More malty. I definitely agree with that. The citrus, but it's not. I think the West Coast is really going for that grapefruit kind of thing. This is a little different. It's yep. nice. This is definitely a burger beer. This is definitely a burger beer. Yep. I like this one. All right, All and right. we have a porter. Oh, stout. Yeah. Or a stout. Sorry. This station. They're washing glasses. They're they're serious. I like how you call it cow puncher too. Right. That's that's a good name. <laughs> Who came up with the name? Yeah, uh, that was just us, you know. After a few drinks, it seemed like a good idea at the time. So. No, nah, there's more to that story. What? Yeah. Tell the people at home; they want to know. <laughs> well, that's it. I mean, no cows were, you know, injured in the making of this beverage. But, okay. Uh, yeah. After a six pack, you may head out, tip some cows over. Hmm. This uh, this is really good. Yeah. I like so this, this is my personal favorite, Scallywag Imperial Stout. Uh, 7.4 IBU, a lot of chocolate malt, some coffee as well, and we aged it on oak chips to give it that roasty flavor. It's this is like a, I'm not I I'm not a stout person usually, but this is like delicious as a dessert on its own. Thank you. Yeah, that's my personal favorite as well. I, I like this a lot. So, how did what what made you choose to produce these three? Why are these like your wheelhouse beers? So we started brewing at home, you know, in college, just five gallons at a time. Okay. And these were our original, you know, IPA and stout. Okay. And this pale ale is only about two weeks old. It's a new one. We put our dog, our French bulldog, on it. So uh, we gotta we gotta ale. show the people at home now. Right, right. Let's look the camp. Oh, actually. Okay. So that's their dog right there. This beer is only two weeks old. You probably only can drink it here at this point. So yep. come to Beer Summit, 5.30. There's a second session. Still tickets available, beersummit.com. Great. Um, so where can people find your beer? Uh, we're all over Central Mass, Western Mass, and more coming towards Boston, Cambridge, Somerville. OK. All right, great. Hey, thank awesome. you very great much to meet you. Thank you very much. Thanks, man. No problem. All right, so that's three beards. Check them out. Three guys just crushing it right now. Um, we're going to go to... 
All right. Our friends at Castle Island Brewery, we're gonna check out right now. We're we're gonna we're we got the Facebook live stream going on the Beer Summit page. So. All right, we're gonna come back. They have something special for us. I, I was told if I come back in a half an hour, we'll catch the uh, real deal person, all right? So we're gonna go to... This stout is delicious, by the way. You need to get here for this. We're gonna check out right behind us is Brown's Brewing Company, okay? We'll see what they got going on. How are you guys doing? We're doing the Beer Summit Facebook live stream. <laughs> you guys are on it. Right. So I'm gonna give you the microphone here. Oh boy. So tell us about Brown's Brewing Company for the people at home that don't know about you. All right, Brown's Brewing right at Troy, New York. Okay. Since 1993. We also have a facility in North Hoosick Falls, Balloon Set. That's where we do our canning. We just started to can. Is that is that New York? I'm sorry. Yes, that's also <laughs> New York. It's right over the border from Bennington, Vermont. Okay. A lot of people are familiar with Bennington, so right there is uh first it was like a tasting room, tap room. Okay. And now we're starting to serve, serve food there. We give uh, brewery um, tours. So, like I said, we just started the canning, so that's going very well. And hold on, I want to show you guys the cans because they have really cool graphics on their cans. And I know I'm, I'm, I'm in the back of them, but you can see that. Well, a nice little chevron pattern. Yeah, people, what's that, raspberry? That's a cherry raspberry. This is our seasonal Vienna lager. I love these designs, yes, okay. I'm not sure if these are on Pinterest, but I'm pretty sure it'd be going viral right now. <laughs> All right, so let's let's get down to business here. What kind of beer do we have, and what are we going to be tasting? And if what we have with us today are... Is this yours? Yeah, that's oh, fine. Yeah. If you just dump, dump it so I can... Oh. Unfortunately, I can't drink all 40 beers or else... Uh... <laughs> we have our Coast to Coast IPA. This is our new IPA. Sorry, that was the green chevron the green, here. Right. That's what I'm calling. I'm sorry if That's it's good. not oh. accurate, <laughs> but it... and we have our cherry raspberry. Okay. Which is our it's a very popular beer in a pub. Okay. It's an ale. We have our oatmeal stout. This is our flagship beer. And that's also very popular. Okay, oatmeal stout oatmeal is their stout. flagship. Yeah, that's our flagship. And our Vienna Lagers, our new seasonal beer. So this is something new to us. Okay. So it's very popular here. A lot of people are trying it. When did you guys just start producing that? Uh, I'm going to say about six months ago or that. Yeah. Okay. It's, it hasn't been long. All right. So probably a beer summit uh, first for most people. They probably haven't seen it out in the market yet. Right. We're just uh, we're just starting to push out this way a little bit. Okay. So. It's kind of a new market for us out this far out towards the Boston area. Okay. So we're also trying to, we're going into Vermont, a little bit of Western New York. So it's going pretty good. Nice. Well, I just want to tell the people at home because they can come out at 530, try some new beers that aren't in Boston. Right. Excellent. Let's try some. <laughs> okay. What would you like to try? Um, you tell me. You're, you, you know? <laughs> what did you just have before? This I one? had a, that was a stout before. You want so, to try our stout? Sure. All right. Which is their, um, how did you phrase it again? That's, that's, it's that's our flagship. Flagship, yes. thank you. All right, so cheers. We have the flagship oatmeal stout from Brown's Brewing. Wow, you know what? It's nice, isn't it? It's really nice. You would think this beer is heavy, heavy, heavy. This is really yeah. light. It's very light. And it's only five and a quarter in the ABV. It's light. Right. It's got it a little chocolate end to it, sort of. Very, very, yeah. very light chocolate. Very yeah, light. Very when light. you drink, usually you drink these beers, it's like you're drinking an oatmeal cookie dessert. This is totally yeah. different. I, I nice. can see why yeah. this is your flagship. This, this is, is really my favorite one also. Can you buy it in Massachusetts? Are you distributed or? Yes. 
Yep, you can buy it in Massachusetts. Okay. The beverage centers are package stores. They what they is that what they call them out here? Yeah, they call some, them beverage centers. Some and, call it, yeah the packy. Yeah, it's different. <laughs> yeah, it's different in New York than it is here. Right. But yeah, so see, we're, what got you started in '97, I believe. '93. '93. What got you started? Cause that I couldn't tell you because I'm not the brewer. Okay. I'm not the owner. Oh, all right. <laughs> I wish he was here to tell yeah. you. But, uh, yeah, our owner is Gary Brown, and he just started, you know, interested in brewing beer, and he started that off. Because he was and just kinda, and 93, very well ahead of the craze. Yeah. Very well ahead of it. Probably, when would you say Sam Adams got, like, popular? Because oh, they were kind of precipitous. Yeah, to the industry. Yeah, I, I don't know their uh, when their, their lager was a big hit. That really took off. But now they got, they got tons of stuff out now. I, I, this is great. I know. It is very good. Mm. We have an IPA, a Raz, and the lager. I, I want to try the summer lager. Okay. Let's, let's try that next. Give me a quick rinse. If you, oh, we don't have a bucket here. Well, you know what? Here, rinse it with that. <laughs> Do you have a bucket? Sometimes you gotta rinse the cup after yeah, right you go there. for a. Uh... Thank you. There you go. So this is a sorry the Vienna Lager. Vienna Lager. What does that mean? Why Vienna? What makes it a Vienna Lager? That's a good question. See, I'm not a brewer, but. Uh... A little, little sweetness to it. It's definitely sweet. It's yeah. very, very, very light. It's good on a hot day. This is this is really light and still so maintains yeah. some flavor. If you're thinking of going for a classic like macro brewer light beer. This is the one you gotta, I would say switch up your game and go for Only 4.6 on the alcohol, ABV. The Vienna Lager, very light. It's That's a great, nice little summer beer. Yeah. You're exactly. um, going to a party, you're going to drink a six pack, that's the one, this is the one you want. Yeah, very sessionable. As you can see, pouring it right there for the people at home. Cherry Raz. So, what what was the motivation to do a Cherry Raz combo? The, now, from what I understand, this was like one of the, they did this a long time ago. I didn't know if the original brewer that Gary Brown worked with is even, I think he went off somewhere else. But this is actually not one of our owner's favorite beers, but it's <laughs> very popular. Okay. So, the formula, I believe, has changed a little bit from when the first brewer, I don't even know what his name was. So it was very popular in our Troy pub. They'll put a cherry in it. And actually we're coming out with, in a 16 ounce can, the oatmeal stout and the cherry raz mixed together. They call it a black cherry. That's really nice. That's one of my favorite ones. I, that sounds interesting. I feel like we have like a, a Cherry Garcia moment right now between the, the, imperial, the oatmeal stout and the cherry raz. And there's no extracts in it. It's all real, real cherry. cherry and raspberry in it. No Let's try something. it. Try that? Yeah. That Vienna lager is really nice. I like that. Okay. Fresh can. That's good. See the cherries? You definitely smell the cherry. I see. The raspberry. Not, not overwhelming. It's got a nice flavor. For the people at home, this is our audience right now. <laughs> Cheers! Hey, hey, let's get the hand drops. <laughs> uh, not sweet. This is this is very crisp. Very different. Yeah. And I like a cough medicine right no, we had one earlier. This one's very, I, this is, come to Brown's Brewing, okay? They got some good beers. Not in a lot of Boston bars, so another unique thing about uh, the Beer Summit, 
come check out this. All right, my man. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I enjoyed the Browns Brewing. Thank you. All right. That was Browns Brewing. They had some... The Oatmeal Stout, their flagship, we know why it's their flagship, okay? The Vienna Session... No, Vienna Lager, sorry. Another great beer. Let's go over to our friend Mike, who is the founder of the Beer Summit, okay? Let's see if we can grab him. He's a busy guy. All right, there's Mike in the background. Let's see if we can grab him real quick. I hope there's some hot girls watching this. We love you. <laughs> Is that Mike? If we can grab you for a couple. Where, where did Mike go? Here. Mike, you're up. Mike. Long time oh. confused from each other. There you go, Mike. So just want to hold on to that. So. We have Mike, the founder of Beer Summit. One tell of them, one of them, not the only one. Not the only one, okay. Tell us how you got this experience started because I think I won it. I've been going to the Beer Summit for a while. I think I won it. My first one was after I graduated college, which is at least five years ago. Incredible experience. A lot of people, I think, have replicated your model. What got this started? Well, actually, we came in uh, after it had already been started, but uh, you know, the idea was always bring craft beer to the masses. Um, in 1999, that was hard to do. Now, oh, come on. <laughs> it's a fun crew. You guys yeah. got to come in. So yeah, I'm not going to miss that at all. <laughs> uh, yeah, luckily, this is the only time of year I see those idiots. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be, I mean, you know, it was 1999. It was hard to find a good beer. Now, it's it's really easy, and that's excellent. You know, it's, it's great to hear. It's not hard. You go to your local packy. You can get an excellent beer. You can go to the brewery. There's over 130 in Massachusetts alone. And uh, you know that's that's what craft beer is all about. So it's 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 definitely uh, in its prime and it's hit its stride and it's an excellent you know situation for the whole market. And uh, I like to see the big brands being challenged. So still still love to see the craft beer doing well. Yeah. So when you when you put together the beer summit, how do you go about the selection process for who gets picked to participate? Well, we have our favorites. We have our friends, right? We know a lot of people in the industry. It's been, you know, this is our 19th one, so obviously we've been around a little bit. Um, and because there's three of us that do sort of the picking, plus a lot of input from other people, you know, it's it's more like a, it's a pretty democratic process, right? But, you know, for the most part, you know, if you're not a jerk and you've got good beer, then you're in. You know, that's pretty much, that's the basic one. Okay. So. Who is the longest tenured participant in the Beer Summit? You know, well, we were just talking about that, and um, they actually couldn't make it to this one, but that probably would have been Woodstock Inn and Brewery. This is the first one I think they ever missed, and I think it's because uh, uh, she had a, a personal issue and they weren't able to make it. But that's that's probably the one. So I won't give her a hard time, uh, even though I think this <laughs> is the mean, only one she sessions, ever missed. I mean, 19 sessions, that's a good record. Oh, no, no, it's or, more like 51. 51, uh, Yeah, okay. we did three, three or four a year, depending on the year. Started off with one and then finishing with one. But other than that, we had three to 40 a year uh, in the middle. But... Uh, so as you've seen the industry grow, um, where do, what do you see ahead for the craft beer? Oh, geez, I don't know. Uh, you know, there's a lot of rumors about that. People talk about European craft finally getting its legs. I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, I think it's going to become more and more local, not like hyper local, but you know, in Germany, every county has its own brewery, and so there's not like a, a national beer of Germany, and there's. You know, if you go to the north of Germany, you can't get beer from the south as easily. I mean, obviously that comes a little with uh, distribution. But I think it'll be more like that, right? You're from, maybe not county, but you're from this part of the state. And, you know, you've got these three brewers that are your most often thing. And there's some staples. But other than that, you know, that's that's what I think could happen. I say. That would be kind of nice to see. You know, you're from Rosendale. You have the Rosendale Brewery or the, you know. I think I've there. definitely started to see it come down to a zip code type business where it's really fun we get to drink a lot of local beers um, I think today just from walking around you know we've drank uh, Lookout Farm from Natick we got Lord Hobo which is here in Cambridge um, who else we Tap Brewing which was I forget which town they were out of uh, but they're they're also Haverhill yep. a lot of I'm local I'm trying to think stuff. who the closest is um, well there's a lot sort of just right in the neighborhood like right outside but yeah Lord Hobo in Cambridge maybe the, maybe the closest but, uh, I mean, one just opened up, I, I couldn't get them here, but one just opened up in my neighborhood, Swamp, uh, Turtle Swamp, 
I haven't had them yet, but they look really good. But that's like less than a mile from my house, so yeah. they would probably be the closest to this physical location. Okay. <laughs> so, guys, come on. There's still a 5:30 session. I've been talking about it throughout the live stream. There's still tickets available. They can go Absolutely. to beersummit.com to get the yep. tickets, or right, yeah, right here at the door. You can buy tickets right here at the door, actually, to make it even easier. So come on out for that. A lot of local stuff. We were just at Brown um, Brewing. You're not going to see a lot of that around here. So Mike here has done a great job of bringing in brewers where you can't even taste local some of their stuff. Yeah, they're from Maine. They came down today. Yeah. So come on out. We'll see you there. We're gonna we're gonna keep tasting some more beers, but we're we're not the big guys busy with a lot of yeah. stuff at the event. Thank you very much. All right, thanks, Max. All right, no problem. All right, so that was Mike. Awesome guy. He's been doing the beer summit for over nine years, okay? One of the originators. I know he was very humble and he said, you know, he hasn't really, wasn't on the scene, but he's done a lot for the industry. Let's talk to um, Mighty Squirrel here. We got Mighty Squirrel. Mighty Squirrel, pro sport, four grams of protein. We're gonna talk about that. Let's see what they got going on. We're gonna, we're gonna head behind the booth, okay? Behind the booth moment. Hey guys, how's it going? We got the uh, Beer Summit live stream. What's up, Beer Summit family? And we got a microphone for you. Let me uh, fish it out of the wire cord. Oh, this is official. This is official. There we go. You gonna clip me? <laughs> yeah. <if> it, <laughs> yeah. Hands free, baby. It's my first time ever using a clip-on microphone. Adam, this is JJ with Mighty Squirrel. All right. out here. Yeah, what's up? Tell us where Mighty Squirrel originated from and how you guys got started. Yeah, so we're based here in Boston. Uh, I originated because we like to play sports. I play ice hockey with friends. Uh, the other co-founders go for runs. We like to have beers after. Okay. But there was no beer that really fit our lifestyle. Okay, so what he's talking about right now is you play a little pickup hockey at the rink. You have a couple beers in the locker room if you didn't know afterwards. What you're telling me is, is that what the four grams of protein is all about? That's what the four grams of protein and almost you know equally as important, our beer is low carb. So okay. seven grams of carbs and the first beer in the world that's high in protein. So it actually took us four years to create this beer because of the protein specifically. Okay. Yeah. So let's try it. What, do, what yeah, is it? It's, it's, a, it's a Pilsner. I can see it right on the can. Well, why don't we give you, we have our Kiwi White here. All right. All right, we'll start with that. So we're going to flip the camera here. We're going to show all right, the all right. behind the scenes. Behind right. the scenes. First JJ, you want to pour? Two, I'm yeah. clipped in. Pump the cooler. Yeah. So what we have here, JJ is pouring our Kiwi White. It's a Belgian white, um, and it is brewed with Kiwi, obviously. Uh, as I said, low carb, high in protein. You get those nice esters, Belgian uh, yeast that we use, so you'll still get the coriander uh, and the orange peel, um, in addition to a nice kind of Kiwi note in there, too. So. This is a Kiwi beer. Yes. I, definitely the first one I've ever had. That's, That's, I love Kiwi. So if you're not familiar with the Kiwi, the Kiwi is the, it's small. It's well, like yay big as the brown fuzz on the outside and it's green with white and the black seeds in the inside yes if you've not had one you are missing out on life it's the best fruit ever that's why we made the beer but there was no real kiwi beer out there there's beers with kiwi hops and you know new zealand hops but we so didn't really find the it. way i'd probably describe this beer is it's not sweet but you definitely get a lot of fruit flavor it's cool Thank this you. Is, I, it's interesting. Thank Another you. unique beer that you're going to try at Beer Summit, you're just not going to have out. Um, so definitely 5.30. Come get a ticket at the door. They're still available. Mighty Squirrel. Yes. All right. This is just one of their beers in their lineup. This is one. We're trying. I'm, so for the people at home that don't know me, I'm Max. I'm doing the takeover for Beer Summit. I'm from FOMOPrescription.com. We do a weekly newsletter with the seven most interesting events in the city that help young professionals with their career, health, and social goals. Check us out. What are we trying next? All right, Max, we can do our, uh, I would go to our Pilsner right now, which is, um, it's a Czech-style Pilsner. I'm going to try to double task here. I'm going to go right over here, get yes, you a can. fresh one. So it's a Czech-style Pilsner. And um, we- All right, what, before you move on from that, yes. I'm really getting some definitions from a lot of people. What is, what makes a Czech? Pilsner different than a regular Pilsner? Well, there's uh, German Pilsners, there's Czech Pilsners, and I'm sure, you know, people would define a few different ones. Um, but, you know, some people say that, like, Bohemian Czech Pilsners are a little more hoppy. 
um, than say a German Pilsner. Um, that's mainly the difference. Um, most Pilsners will have like kind of an herbaly note in there from the hops that are used in there. Um, I think Czech Pilsners can be a little more crisp, personally, uh, but they're all lagers, so you know you're gonna get a nice crispness. I, to I it. think it's really good. Thank you. Do we have any water here? I'm getting a little yeah, cross contamination. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the, uh... yeah, yeah. Do you mind I, if you use this? I'm not. No, that's fine. Right. That's It's good water too, by the way. This is water. <laughs> that is good water. This is, this is good water. It's from yeah, a box. It is box water. What will they think of next? Beer with protein. If this is good, it's thank you. Yep. Yeah. Wait. So this is a protein beer. Yes. All three of these beers: the um, kiwi white. Like. Yep. The kiwi white, the uh, sport, and the sport grapefruit IPA. They're all protein. Uh, we say low carb and high in protein. We also have traditional beers. We're not pouring them today, but we have four different uh, styles that are normal protein and normal carbs and all that. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So we have a mocha stout and IPA, uh, Belgian white. What's like IPA. the flagship beer from Mighty Squirrel that people will most likely see in their local uh, cooler? I would say our Kiwi White has been um, kind of the flagship. Yeah, that's really taken. It's it's our best selling beer, and okay. I think you know going into the summer it should kind of continue to. Uh, be that so. people that like like uh, a wana mango try the kiwi beer you're gonna really like it a little bit different fruit but it's the same kind of style is it the same style is that accurate i want mango i think i'm not sure what style i think that's a kolsch i could be wrong so i apologize i compare it more to like a 21st amendment hell or high watermelon okay um but kiwi this is what you need to know okay don't get caught up in the nomenclature <laughs> yeah, it's, that's it's, it's, there's too much nomenclature in beer. They're, it's very similar. If you like them, want to try the Mighty Squirrel. What's it called? Kiwi? Sport Kiwi White. Okay. Yeah. Try that one. Thank you, Max. Where can they find um, your beer? Uh, we're at close to, I believe, 200 retailers across the state right now. Um, you know, the big ones, um, Gasparro's, uh, Total Wine, obviously everybody knows now. Um, and, of course, the little guys, which we never want to forget. So, you know, uh, Blanchard's and... You know, all the great stores um, in and around Boston. So we're at a, we're at a bunch of stores. Oh, we, easily accessible. It's at Blanchard. I see my friend just Is said, that... what up, Lebo? What's up, Will Gardner? Hey, how's it going, Will? Thanks for Why are you me. here, dude? Come back. <laughs> Get That's here so at 5.30. Funny. That's so funny. Yeah. Um, and you can also go to our website, um, and it has all the stores that we're at, all the retailers across the state and right. down in Rhode Island. So. so I think there's one more beer I haven't tried. Cups empty. Yes. Where are we going? We're going, to grape, we're going to Sport Grapefruit IPA. All right. So we've been talking to some of the other um, uh, brewers. Is Because it's a grapefruit IPA, yeah. does that make it a West Coast style IPA? I would, I, everything's subjective in this industry. I'm not going to be that guy, but my personal preference, I guess my personal um, insight on that would be no. I think, you know, East Coast beers have grapefruit notes. You know, most like, American hops kind of have at least a base of a grapefruit kind of flavor. Um, so I would say that wouldn't be the defining kind of element. But that, okay. That's just me. I look for pine when I think like West Coast, like pine and definitely sweeter, um, not as dry as some of the East. East okay. Coast. So I think we have an important takeaway right now. Well, he grabs me my beer. Yeah. Oh, I want to try that. Don't get caught up in the verdage. Just drink the beer. Just make come it. Out, come out to the beer summit. You're gonna try at least probably 20 different beers. Exactly. From 40 different brewers, and you're gonna find out what you like. And you know, I think it, that's all in part of keeping beer fun, is less words, the better. This is good. Thank you. It's good. Not, not overly bitter. I think um, you know a lot of grapefruit IPAs, because grapefruits are bitter and hops are bitter, can be like very bitter, which some people like and some don't. My personal preference is not a lot of bitterness. Um, this this is good though. I like it. I mean, we've obviously already drank about ten different beers, <laughs> and we're just getting started today. So we're I, just getting started. That's it. Five thirty. Come to session two, okay? If you're watching right now. You need to be here. Will Gardner, get down here, dude. Where are you? <laughs> get here. Okay. And for the people at home, you're probably wondering, okay. You're gonna come drink some beers for three and a half hours. You're gonna be hungry out there, okay? Little secret inside tip from FOMOPrescription.com. 
Davio's Mushroom Pizza at the bar. Hot tip, I think it's like $13. Best mushroom pizza in Boston. No one knows about it. Amazing bar. You don't need to get the $40 steak. Go to the bar, get the $13 mushroom pizza. They have the best bar snack menu. They got hamburgers, they got pizza, they got wings, they got sliders. Everything. I, did you know that that Davio's has an amazing bar menu? I do now. And okay. I'm excited about it. I, and when Davio's is not sponsoring this. I just <laughs> happen to live in the neighborhood, and I found out that they have a really good snack menu. So yeah, I know it. it's right across the street from the Beer Summit, so you can stumble in there and uh, get yourself a little nourishment. Is it priced right too? No. <laughs> um, it, it's we're in Boston. Nothing is. Nothing's priced right, but you're gonna go across the street there, and you'll get. Actually, you know what? The two sliders are probably like 10 bucks. So, I don't know, just go there. Don't worry about it. You're like gonna it. be okay. I like it. I might, I'm gonna think I'm gonna go there after this session, so. Macaroni and cheese is amazing. I'm excited. Yeah. This is my fourth year, I think my fourth beer summit I've, I've been to, and I'm, I haven't done the Davios thing, so. Try it. Okay. Good, good uh, bar snack menu. Awesome, you'll probably see me there. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. All right, so this is Mighty Squirrel. Mighty Squirrel. Come check out their Grapefruit IPA, the Kiwi White, and what was the sport beer called? Sport the Pilsner. Pilsner, yep. I'll show you. <laughs> and see JJ, too. Don't forget JJ. about JJ, all right? <laughs> we love JJ. Hey. And he's, look at that pour, too. You know what we want to know? Yes. Why the cooler? Like, what is the setup actually back here? So this is what we call um, a coil box, or you know, some people use cold plates. And essentially, what it does is uh, it draws beer from the keg, right? Yeah. Obviously, and um, it puts it through these coils. Now, inside this box, there there are coils for each faucet, um, and there's ice in there too, so the coils stay cold. So essentially, the problem could be if the coils weren't in there. It would just hit the, it would hit the faucet and it would just foam the beer up. So by keeping the beer cold as it comes up and it draws it, you're, you're not getting any foam because the temperature, there's no real huge temperature change between the keg beer and, you know, traveling out the faucet. That's, yeah. I never saw what was in there. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. People have, they use plates as well and they do the same thing essentially. Okay. Yeah. So that's how you keep it cold. Yeah. Is, yeah. I mean, it keeps it chill. We've it? all been to a uh, college party to we stick the keg in the uh, ice, but uh, it only keeps. It Usually, chill. you're doing a handstand on top of yeah, it. Though, right. so, yeah, right. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. Is this the first year doing the live stream? First year. All right, I like it. Awesome. All righty. So a lot of, we're, I don't want to keep you, so that's all I was saying. No, so, no. He's got, scroll, come I'm visit him. Come visit me. Will, get down here. I'm going to show you, um, there, there's the front door, head to your left when you come in. Yes, please, please, uh, we got plenty of beer and uh, we'll be here all day and night, so please come see us. Thanks, man. No problem, thank you. Well, this is my cup and this is mine. This is what we, we're, we're double dipping now, I guess. Let's, we're going to come over to our friends here at Revival Brewing. Let me just get a quick, uh, we want to show what's going on because this is a really cool table. Revival. We're going to have to ask him about this. They, of course, just got really busy. We're our friends at Brooklyn, too. All right, let's talk to Brooklyn. Revival got too busy right now. How's it going, guys? Hello. We're at the Beer Summit live stream now, and it's set up. I, there we go. There's the microphone. I'm sorry. We're we've we've talked to a couple people now and had a couple beers. What does Brooklyn have going on? We're gonna do that. today. We brought three beers. We've got our Sriracha Ace, which is a Japanese hopped Belgian saison, Brooklyn Summer Ale, and we also brought one special offering, which is called Triple Burner, and it is a ten and a half percent barrel aged triple aged with spices. Okay. It's, if you thought she said that fast, it's because she said it extremely fast. It was pretty quick. It was, it was very quick. We're going to, um, we're going to, we're going to grab our glass and we're going to go through it a little bit slower. So a little bit slower. Hold on. I'm going to pour one beer. Pour one beer. Um, I don't know. 
If you think I have a lot of things in my hands right now, it's because I do. We got the selfie stick. She went for the summer ale. For the people at home, we got a first timer here. Okay. Microphone? Thank you. You can clip that on your shirt if you want. Oh, that's okay. Of course you may. So what we are pouring for him is a 10.5% Belgian triple that is barrel aged with spices. It's a blend of 52 spices from the gentleman at the La Bois Spice Shop in Brooklyn, New York. Okay. Summer ale. They're very busy. Your friend just went, must have went on a break. We're gonna get in here. We're gonna. Which one should we start with? So my favorite beer that we have on draft today is our Brooklyn Sriracha Ace. It is a Japanese hopped saison. It is not made with hot sauce. Super lemongrassy, bright, citrusy, and the sneakiest seven point two percent beer. All right, we're gonna get in there. It's Keg's being a diva today. Here we go. So, we have the Sriracha Ace. There's no Sriracha in this beer, I can confirm. No hot sauce. There's no hot sauce. It's definitely a, what is it? It's a Belgian wheat? It is a Belgian farmhouse that is hopped with only one Japanese hop that is called Sriracha Ace. Got it. Yes. It is it's not good. hot sauce. It's, it is. It's not hot sauce. It's a Belgian no. wheat. It's very good. It is super lemon grassy, really bright, really citrusy. The opposite of a hot sauce beer. So, how did we come up with this? Tell us. This beer has been in our portfolio for a really long time. This hop was actually found by Sapporo and they didn't want to use it, but when our brewmaster found it, he was like, it's so complex, so interesting. And this beer used to only be made in the large format beers and four packs and six packs. So it's been hanging out with us for a while, but it's definitely a brewery favorite. Can we find it in Massachusetts? Oh, absolutely. You can find it at pretty much all major retailers and a lot of bars in the area. Okay. Sorry, guys. I've taken a time out. But <laughs> it's very good. Srirachi Ace yes. is what it's called. We're going to try. I'll hold on to that for you. So the Beer Summit is starting to pick up some uh, pace here. And we're gonna we're at Brooklyn Lager, right? No, sorry. Brooklyn Brewery. We're at Brooklyn Brewery. Brooklyn Lager is the one I typically it tend to drink. You see the flag. 1988. If you haven't been to Brooklyn, by the way, go visit it. All right, so what's up next after the Sriracha Ace? Then we will go to our Brooklyn Summer Ale. I know it's been raining for like nine weeks in Boston, but summer will be upon us soon enough. It is a nice 5% pale ale. It is not super, super citrusy, but really delicious. All right, so she finally doesn't have a line. I think we can uh, summer ale. We're really busy today. So tell us about the, um, the, I've been to the outside of the Brooklyn Brewery. There's a bowling alley there, is that correct? Brooklyn Bowl is right next to us. We are not the same company, but we do share a namesake. We are right on North 11th and Barry, and they are on the corner of 12th and Barry. So super close, they also have live music all the time. So we there after work quite a bit but the brewery is open friday nights and all day saturday sunday you can bring your own food dogs babies and just hang out all right so a little secret tip for the people at home at fomoprescription.com they have what's called the smorgasbord festival right around the corner from the brooklyn brewery and basically at it it's this massive food truck festival that happens on the weekends and you can hit that up and then you can walk over to the Brooklyn Brewery to grab it's some true. beer. There's lots of great food offerings there, really fun. And we have a lot of great food trucks in Boston, but New York's got some amazing stuff going on. So 
Brooklyn. Go to Brooklyn. October 27th and 28th, the entire Brooklyn brewery will be coming to Boston and we are going to be having our beer mansion. It Where? is going to be at Cyclorama. Tickets go on sale really soon. It is a massive party with giant beer themed rooms, installation, food, live music. It's going to be awesome. Um, you heard it here first at the Beer Summit page via FOMOPrescription.com. Brooklyn Beer is coming to Boston. They're doing a huge festival at the Cyclorama. We all know the Cyclorama on Tremont Street. Great venue. Beer Mansion. Tickets are available on our website soon. What's your website? BrooklynBrewery.com. All right, BrooklynBrewery.com. We're going to get that on the newsletter. We're going to look out for it. We're going to thank you very much for all your beer. Thank you. We love Brooklyn. We're going to move on to the next brewery. A lot of good stuff coming up here at Summit. We have White Lion out of Springfield. Let's, we're gonna try some beer from our friends at White Lion. Out of Springfield. How are you? How's it going, my friend? We're live on the Beer Summit Facebook live stream. How you doing? Tell us about White Lion out of Springfield. Yep. So we're uh, brewery out of Springfield. First craft brewery out of Springfield. Uh, we've been around for about two years now. Um, we've got several beers here that we bring in. One of them we're debuting today, which is our cranberry wheat beer, which is a German wheat beer that we're uh, that we're launching today. We have our two flagship beers, which is our uh, pale ale and then our red ale, and then we also have our blue eye black, which is our black IPA, which which is a nice mix between a porter and a stout and an, and an American IPA. All right, so why don't we fill up these yeah, guys' we'll glasses these guys first? Guys. We got to, we got to keep the people at the uh, event happy. So we're gonna try a red red ale and So that was the red ale. Yes. Right? Yep. yep, that's our red ale. That's our American red. How was it? Delicious. There you go. Thank you. We're back with my man. What, what was your name again? My name's Tim. Well, there's clip there on go. there. We'll clip All right. There we go. All right. All right. So we got Tim here from White Lion. White Lion. Yeah. The red ale. And what was the other signature beer that you guys are producing? So we have the yeah the red ale and the uh, I, and our pale ale are the ones that we launched with two All right. years ago. Which one should I start with? <laughs> we could we could start we could start with the red ale because it doesn't have as much hops in it. All right, it? let's start with the red All ale. Right, let's do that. And there you go. All right, perfect. So the red ale, we you know it's it's going to be a standard American red. Uh, so you're going to use those caramel malts in there to kind of get that nice caramel flavor out of it. We did use a little bit of the American hops in there, Ooh, um, but good. very subtle. Uh, we wanted it to be nice and dry and clean. That's where the American part comes in. We use that American yeast to kind of clean up. Um, Six point five percent alcohol. Yeah, you can get that at most uh, most package stores. This is a good beer. This is a this is a lot going on here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let, let me ask you, what yeah, makes ahead. an ale red? So the that's the, the malt. So most of the malts are all barley. And okay. it's, depending on how long you kiln it, so the, how long you actually cook it for, gives it a different color. So as you kiln a little bit longer, you get uh, a reddish color out of the grain, which also imparts more flavor. So the more you kiln it, the more flavor you get out of it. So like we have a red here, which is kind of kiln for a little while. But then if you go all the way, you get the black, like this one over here. And that's what happens when you when you kiln it all the way, and that gives you the more of that roastier profile, 
so you're going to get that kind of coffee and roasty and chocolate flavors out of it. Is, try try the, the red same. ale. It's really good. All right. I'm not, I'm not usually a red ale person, but Let's try it. Absolutely. I don't need the coffee. There you go. Thank you. Well, and you guys will be set at Springfield, Mass. Yeah, out of Springfield, Mass. Yep. I went to law school at one X, so. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we've done some events over there. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, we've been around for about two years now. Do we get tax credit from it? Well, oh, uh, yeah, because there's a lot of R&D involved. <laughs> uh, we have, we do, we are getting a little bit, and we're also getting no, some I'm grants from the city. Sorry, I'm a tax attorney, so <laughs> I'm going to ask you. <laughs> we, we got to get this person outside. Yeah, I'm this guy. All right, the How are you? What can I get you? The, the which one? The, the pale ale, absolutely, yeah. Very good. So this is going to be a nice, crisp American pale? It's going to be just, nice, crisp, clean flavor, and you're going to get that nice flavor from the uh, citrus hops. I just want to comment. Um, I can't get the camera on that. <laughs> or you could also do this. I got it on the back of my shirt, too. Oh, oh, oh we, got, we got the white line. I'm not going to lie. From the back, it, I felt like we had a Game of Thrones kind of thing going on here. And it's a really cool, it's just a How cool you doing, gentlemen? Um, pull doing great. on one of the uh, taps. Absolutely. The red ale. This is a real good red Is red? Is this distributed in Boston? Yes, it is. We are still definitely starting to distribute pretty heavy out in the Boston area. Okay. The, the what red liquor the store is closest to the... Um, Castle, can we find this at? I do not have that actually. I don't know okay. the exact liquor stores that have it quite yet, but for the people at home, look out for this red ale. It's yeah, very absolutely. good. Yep. Now let's there, try the other. The cranberry, absolutely. He's going for the cranberry. It's the White Walker beer. Yeah. <laughs> and what was the other signature beer that you had? The other one is our, which is our just our pale ale. It's just called the White Lion Pale Ale. Try the red ale. It's very good. We got the red ale, the black IPA. We got the pale. You want to try the pale? Absolutely. It's a long day. There you go, sir. He's got the pretzel necklace. Yeah, he's in for the long haul. These are made, handmade by my friend. All right. You got to bring your own. There you go. Got to keep yourself going. Absolutely. Cheers. Enjoy it. Cheers. We're, uh, we're actually building out the brew house right now in downtown, right in downtown Springfield, right by the Civic Center. By the Civic Center? Yes, absolutely. Right by Court Square area. Yeah. Uh, Civic Center, Court House. Uh, down the road is the uh, Hall of Fame. Yep. How close are you to the casino? Uh, we're going to be about a mile or so away from the casino. Yeah. They're, they're more towards the southern end of the city. Yeah, okay. I just school down there, so it's good. All right. It's good to hear. Enjoy. Enjoy the beer. How you doing, man? Absolutely. It's a good choice. It's a good choice. Yeah, the red ale is definitely flying off the shelf today. There you go, man. Enjoy. What, what was the it. second beer we're going to go for? Uh, we're going to go for the pale ale this time. So it's an American right, we're going pale. For the pale ale. 5% alcohol. It what makes your pale ale like unique compared to some of the definitely other Definitely what makes it unique is the fact that we're really concentrating on the flavor and the aroma of the hops that are used in it. Okay. Uh, we're not, we didn't want it to be too over bitter and stick on the palate too long. And it's got a very clean finish to it. How you guys? Oh. Oh, you're good. They need some beer. Doing? With the people at home? What, the red ale? Absolutely. The red ale's a good choice. There you go, man. Absolutely. Enjoy. All right. Go All right. for it. So White Line, they have a real deal IPA for the IPA people that like a really bitter IPA. I'd say this one's on the more bitter side of the uh, equation. Which one? Absolutely. Yeah. Is that this one? Yeah. There you go. What Enjoy. Was, what was that dark one? So that's our blue eye black, which is our black IPA. We're gonna, we're gonna try that one. <laughs> yeah. So this is our blue eye black. It's a black IPA. So we used all those roasted malts that we were talking about. So when you roast them, you get that chocolate okay. coffee out of there. And then we use those same American hop profile, the Citra and Simcoe, to try to really okay. get that juiciness out of it. All right. So there here we go. go. We got a darker beer how you, here. How you gentlemen doing? That's our cranberry wit beer. It's our German German wheat beer. You want to try the pale ale? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Another dark beer that is not heavy it is delicious. This is a great option. Yeah, so this it's going to be a nice dark American yeah, IPA, right but it's going to be really nice and light. Let's try it right out of my glass. Yeah, yeah appreciate it, it, man. I appreciate right? it. It's great. We actually we just we just launched so we're it today. Doing here. Um, we're just sharing yeah. beers. We're having a good time. All right, there you go. <laughs> So it's going to have a subtle home. cranberry flavor to it, but you're going to get that nice kind of German wheat beer out of it. All right. Yeah, no problem. All right, great. Thank you very much. So this is White Lion out of Springfield, another local Massachusetts brewer. Come try the Red Ale. Come try the IPA and the Black and Blue. Is that correct? Blue-Eyed Black IPA, yep. Okay, Blue-Eyed Black IPA. There you go. This is not a heavy beer. It is delicious. Appreciate Try it. it. Absolutely. Appreciate it's it. It's delicious. All right. Thanks, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Let me grab that microphone back. All right. All right. We're going to head around. We're going to do a little loop around the Beer Summit. Okay? If you're tuned in right now, give me a little hello in the comments section, okay? My name's Max. I'm from FomoPrescription.com. You can see me every day. I highlight an event happening every day in the city that's the most interesting thing happening for young professionals focused on their career, health, and social goals. We're just trying to help people get on their path faster to make things awesome, okay? So, bye, what? <laughs> let's, let's pay a visit to our friends at Down East, okay? Down East. So right now I have the White Lion. I, f I forget the exact name. I don't want to call it Black Eyed Peed, but it's kind of similar. This is a very light, dark beer. It looks dark, it looks heavy, but it's very light, delicious. Let's see what our friends at. We got Krabby's. So, all right, for the people at home, so we're doing a live stream on the on the beer summit page. Okay. Hold on, I left my cup behind. We don't we don't want to leave that behind. We're gonna give you the microphone here. Cool. Yeah, it's okay to pull. It's there's a lot of cords. No people, you guys aren't seeing that at home, but What's going on? we're here at the it's, uh, Is this Krabby's? St. Killian Importing. Sorry, we're from. All right, St. Killian Importing. Import, for the brands. for the people at home, what does that mean? What brands do you uh, represent? Yeah, Bitburger, so Lemon Rather, Carlsberg, Cronenberg, Wells, Banana Bread Beer, and Krabby's Ginger Beer. Okay, so if you're looking for the perfect ginger beer, check out Krabby's. What makes it great? It's alcoholic ginger beer. Yes. Um, from my experience, it's. It's just, you got goslings, people are familiar with it. Krabby's is like that bump up. If you really want to make a great, right, Moscow mule, you add in the Krabby's. Absolutely. All right, so we have a couple other beers that you're representing. I see Carlsberg. What is, what is that, 1664? It's uh, Cronenberg from France. We have Cronenberg Blanc, which is their Belgian wheat beer. Okay, let's try that. Um, just give me a little quick rinse here. I, yeah, yeah. When you come back, we're just going to stick that there. Sometimes you need to clean the glass. I mean, I know it's not a wine tasting, but we just want to clean the glass a lot to go from a uh, stout-style beer to a... What style of beer is this? A Belgian wheat beer. So we have a Belgian wheat. Hold up the bottle for me real quick. 1664, have you ever seen this in the cooler? It's a blue bottle. It is. Out of France, Belgian wheat. It's a bit uh, fruitier, a little more citrus than most Belgian wheat beers. Very fruity. Um, not sweet, but very fruity. Yeah. Definitely a good beach beer. This is a good. Is that what you describe it as? Oh, yeah, it's a great summer beer. All right, we have a couple people at the uh, event right now. He's got a bore for, so we're gonna let him do that. We're gonna we'll come back. I'm not lying. <laughs> we have a can too. We're gonna find out what the can is. I don't know. The can is right there.
So the 1664. If you really like Belgian weeds, you're really into like the fruit style beer, highly recommend. This is a good beach beer. It's it's very fruity. It's but it's not sweet, it's crisp. For the people at home too, I'm watching the Red Sox. I don't know if you know. Got a live stream of the game right there. All right, let's go back to this can. What's the can that we have? Uh, which one? We got a bunch. We have uh, Bitburger, a Lemon Rattler, Carlsberg, Slight Lager, and Wells. The Bit the Bitburger. Bit Is that what it's called? Yeah. All right. So Hold lemon, that for me. So yeah. So All right, we're Lemon gonna... Rattler. It's half lemonade, half Pilsner. Can I just dump that in there? Yeah, I don't know where. We got another bucket. All right, pull up the can for me. All right, great. So this is a bit burger. Yeah. What is this beer? Uh, so it's half Pilsner, half lemonade. It's a Ooh. traditional German rattler. Very lemony. Okay. You're probably familiar with the Dell's Shandy. Yeah. This is probably what the Dell's Shandy should taste like. It yeah. definitely tastes like a lemon icy. It's with a lager instead of like a Shandy. It's usually some kind of wheat ale. Okay. But, um, yeah, the Germans do it. Business. Interesting. This is, it's like a lemon icy. It's very good. Bitburger. Never had it. It's a German beer. Basically, it's a half lemonade, half half Pilsner. Very good. Thank you, my man. If you're watching at home, come on out to the beer summit at 5:30. They're doing their second session. Tickets available at the door. Woo! <laughs> we have Sam Adams here. There's a Black Harbor Stout and a... All right, we're gonna go over to Treehouse Brewing. Mike told us this is a spot to be their final. All right, so we're headed over to Trios Brewing. If you look behind me, there's a logo. They're out of Monson, doing some really cool stuff, non-distributed. I'm gonna verify that real quickly. All right, we're back. Treehouse Brewing. We've heard a lot. Mike recommended we stop by. We're at the this is the Beer Summit live stream on Facebook. So tell us about the brewery. Uh, well, we are a small brewery in Munson, Massachusetts. Hold on one second. Let me give you the microphone. Sorry, my bad. No worries. This is a beer tasting. I, I did have a couple. No worries. No worries. Uh, we are located in Munson, Massachusetts. Uh, we have uh, a new brewery being built in Charlton. Uh, today we're pouring Julius, which is our flagship beer. Uh, it's pretty popular. I did have quite the long line, but we uh, we poured pretty fast and got everyone through. All right, so she's gonna pour a couple beers, and then we're gonna we're gonna get one. So get I'm one not beer. lying. There's the line. Okay, we're gonna. I just gotta empty my cup really quick. She's already gonna run out. All right. She opened at 1:30. You open at 1.30 and you're already going to run out of one beer, right? Yes, that's correct. She said that's correct. So, all right. So what are we drinking? This is Julius. This is an IPA and this is our flagship beer. Um, you're going to get like a nice citrus, orange, um, smooth uh, mouthfeel. It's about 6.5%, somewhere around there. We're live streaming from the Beer live Summit page. Live streaming from the Summit. Woo! I'm telling you, come here at 5.30 is fun. You drink unlimited samples of beer, all right? I'm at Treehouse Brewing drinking the Juliet. Juliet. 
Julius. Not to be confused with Juliet, Julius. For our IPA fans at home, you're gonna wanna come check this out. What makes your IPA unique? Um, we don't put any fruit in it, that's for sure. So this is all based on hops that we use. Um, the flavor is 100% hops, no fruit. Very orangey, very citrusy. There's a lot of citrus, definitely bitterness coming through. Now tell us, how do people get your beer? They have to come to Munson, Massachusetts to get our beer. We are not distributed anywhere. Um, we do sell out quickly though, so you should always check our website on the ONTAP page, and you can also check our Twitter at Treehouse Brew Co. Okay, so when I told you guys you had to come to Beer Summit because you got to check out this beer, is because if you're from Boston, Monson's a little bit of a ride. How long is it from Boston to Monson? Uh, it's over an hour, so probably an hour and a half, depending on traffic. All right, so this is an opportunity to come here. Look at the Mighty Squirrel guy. I've never heard of these guys before. Never heard of them. Mighty Squirrel Actually, guy is, is drinking the Treehouse beer. So this no, is what I'm talking about. Everyone knows about this. This is where you need to be. Seriously, I was surprised to see you guys here. It's awesome. We're so happy to be here. There's no line either, really. And we don't do beer fest, so this is no, the one. No, you just happen to cut the line. This, he <laughs> cut the line. Look at the line behind him. That, that, that happens when you're in the industry, you know? Yes. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Go check out Julius Beer. I mean, the Julius Beer at Treehouse. They're doing cool stuff. Or you can come to Beer Summit, 5.30, there's a second session. You don't have to drive all the way out. You can come here in very little line. No one knows. Nice, crisp, CIP you want. FYI, this is six and a half percent. Thank you very much. All right, we're gonna head over to our friend at Opa Opa, based out of Southampton. How's it going? Good, we got the Facebook live stream for Beer Summit. Want to visit our friends at Opa Opa. Let's mic you up real quick. We'll, we'll give you that. There you go. Hold on to it. So tell us about Opa Opa. When, when did Opa Opa get started? Opa Opa has been around for uh, 13 years now. We started back in 2004. Uh, and it, uh, we just celebrated 13 years uh, two months ago. So, um, for my fellow UMass people, you're probably more yeah, familiar yeah. with uh, Opa Opa because it's, it's based out of Western Mass. Great stuff. They have, I'm looking around right now. Hold on, let me flip the camera so you can see. I think you guys have at least, what, five beers here? Uh, we have three beers here today. We have the Red Rock Amber Ale. Uh, we have the IPA. And then we also have the seasonal beers, the Watermelon Ale. All right, which one was that that you just gave me? Uh, the Red Rock Amber Ale. Can you just hold up the camera real quick? Hold up the bottle. <laughs> There we go. So this is the red ale. Yeah, that's the red rock amber ale. That one is uh, five and a half percent alcohol. Very good. This one, uh, compared to white line, if you're wondering, similar, but this one's a little less um, bite, but very good. Opa Opa is doing some really cool stuff. Let's flip around the camera so you can see. And what's your name? Uh, Yanni. Yanni. So what do you do at Opa Opa? 
I'm, I am the distributor for Opa Opa. Very good. So we got, we got some people there. It's busy. <laughs> uh, we give you more. Right. Thank you. Yeah, you want to be on camera? Huh? We got the Facebook live stream beer summit. There we go. Opa Opa. <laughs> Opa, Opa. Opa. Thank you. <laughs> What else do we got going on? Uh, and uh, the third beer we have is the seasonal beer. Is that uh, the Opa Opa Watermelon Ale. All right, let's hold up the bottle for us so people at home. All right, so the Opa Opa Watermelon. Tell us about it. It's uh, an ale. It's an ale. What uh, does that mean? What is an ale for the, the people at home? It's the style of the beer where you brew it. It's the uh, type that gives you using the malt, the hops. And this one is only 5% alcohol. And they brew it with a natural watermelon flavor. So the nose, very watermelon. And it's the big famous beer from the summertime. Very good, Chris. I like it again, not sweet. How you like it? Oh, I don't like the bottom. IPA. IPA? If you're looking for a watermelon beer, this is a watermelon beer. Yeah, it is a watermelon beer. <laughs> it's a yeah. watermelon beer. Okay? You can, yeah. you can skip the watermelon, you can just drink this beer. Guy that carries around all the beer for that. Every if you just want to, you do it. Yep. Watermelon? It, it tastes like a watermelon beer. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> tastes like summer. Try it. Tastes like summer. Watermelon beer tastes. Smells like watermelon. Tastes like watermelon. Crazy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so the cool thing about coming out to the beer summit is you get to try some beers you normally wouldn't try. You're gonna like a lot of them. Maybe some of them you're not so much you're gonna like, but you know what? That's what you're paying you for is a chance to try something and not have to pay 12 bucks for a six pack that maybe you don't like. This is a great place to get to try a lot of beers that are really great and you try some new things. You're either gonna love them, you're not gonna like them, but it's okay. That's what a beer tasting is for. You're paying. So, 5:30. Beersummit.com, you can get the second session, or you can just come here at the castle on yeah. Columbus Street. Yeah, it's and nice you can get a refreshing. ticket for the second session. Yeah. It's a good time. You just walk around and try 40 different breweries beers. We're going to visit our friends here all yeah. over at uh, Sam Adams. They're over there in the corner. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks for your time. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right, so we're coming to a critical juncture in the event. We got it. We've been live for an hour and a half. Incredible. My name is Max from FomoPrescription.com. We're at the Beer Summit. As you can tell, a lot of people around. Forty different brewers. They have a second session at 5:30. Come on out for it. FomoPrescription.com. It's a free newsletter where we feature the seven most interesting events that help young professionals with their career, health, and social goals. It is totally free. Head over to FOMOPrescription.com. And today is the FOMO Prescription Daily Pick, where we're featuring the Beer Summit. And we want to thank all the people from Beer Summit's Facebook page for joining us. This is an incredible festival. I'm going to flip the camera real quick. We're going to show you what's going on. All right, so let's head over to our friends at Sam Adams. But first, let me, um, we're gonna do that. We're gonna empty the cup.
How's it going? I'm doing the live stream for the uh, Beer Summit uh, Facebook page. Woo. We're with our friend, uh, what's your name? Steve. Steve, and I'm Steve. Max from Bone Up Description. So Steve, Steve, tell us about what's going on here with Sam Adams, what you guys are sampling, and what's new. Yeah, so we got a couple of different things. Um, not new is our summer variety pack right here. Uh, we've got Port Rocker, Session IPA, and uh, Hold on, some, let me summer right there. Port Rocker. Port Rocker. Love it. You yeah. go to the beach, another great beach beer. I know I've been talking a lot about the beach because it's that it's we're at that time of the year where we got it probably about 65 days before I'm on the beach. Port Rocker, great beer for the beach. Yeah, definitely. Rather style beer. Uh, really nice, refreshing, lemony, 4.5%, so you can drink a whole pack of them, no problem. It's uh, true, yeah. <laughs> some of the uh, more exclusive stuff that we have, some of the newer stuff, we've got Bugs and Berries, an exclusive beer that we uh, brewed in partnership with McKellar Brewery. Um, and uh, they actually came over, they did a big beer festival, their Copenhagen Beer Fest, they did here in Boston last year. That is um, the festival, that that, is that it. the Government Center one? Yeah, is that Government Center? Yep. And so they came over here about a month early before that just uh, to brew I'm that gonna up I'm going to pause them real quick. That was a FOMO prescription daily pick. If you don't know about the daily pick, head over to FOMOprescription.com and you can see all the events we're featuring in Boston. It's one per day, the best event happening every day. This festival was one of the ones that we featured. Yeah, the Keller Beer Fest was a really, really good one for sure. They had a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, other things that we have, we have our Black Harbor Stout, which we do make uh, fairly frequently. It's just a lot harder to find. Using a couple different types of pepper in there, some vanilla beans that have been bourboned, um, some cocoa nibs as well, so you get a lot of coffee, chocolate sort of flavor, that subtle vanilla, and a lot of pepper, um, which is really interesting. It's 11% too, so one of our bigger beers that we've got. Um, then finally, we've got our KMF Grand Crew, Cosmic Mother Funk. Uh, one of our pretty Hold interesting on. sour say, beers. Say that name again. That Cosmic was... Mother Funk. Say it three times fast. Ooh, I don't know about that. Cosmic Mother Funk, Cosmic Mother Funk, Cosmic Mother Funk. All right. He didn't drink as many beers as me, so he kind of <laughs> cheated. But KMF really is what good. we normally call it. It's our sour beer. I brewed up with wild ale yeast, some uh, lactobacillus uh, bacteria in there to give you um, all of that lactic acid to give you the sour quality in the beer. And it's aged in Hungarian oak tongues. The, yeah, it's just cool. cheated me out of a question because I was going to ask. <laughs> what makes a sour beer sour? Say it again. A couple of different things. In uh, this beer in particular, we're using Britannomyces yeast and we're also using lactobacillus uh, bacteria. That's more of the traditional um, sort of sour that you're going to get. It's going to produce lactic acid during its fermentation process. That's what gives you that like acetic sort of um, the acidic sour flavor that you're getting. Almost like vinegar is coming from the bacteria that are in there. Yeah. So let's just take it a step back. Sam Adams, one of the first crop brewers in the Massachusetts area. They continue to innovate. You guys got to come out, come to the beer festival, the beer summit, sorry, the correct name. Beer summit. Try what they're doing because they're always bringing new stuff. They're always bringing limited edition things. That's why you should stop by their booth. You know, it's not just the the, the summer pack that you can find at the local um, package store. They have a lot of unique stuff here, so you definitely want to stop by. It's my turn to drink a little bit of it, so let's <laughs> try some. What are we going to get you? Um, we, let's start with the sour beer. Is, sure. that, is that a good spot to start? Um, no. No. We're going to let the expert pick. Yeah, let's start with uh, the, the Bugs and Berries. So this is a little bit more on the tart side. It's a triple blended beer. So it's strawberry wheat, uh, strawberry blonde, cherry wheat, and a little bit of KMF in it. So that's going to give you a nice little balance between that really fruity sweetness and that sour kind of combined to make a really interesting beer. Yeah, for the people at home, let's just show them the bottle. Now we were selling this around the time of the McAllen Beer Fest, but we have sold out at the brewery. Uh, so we saved a little bit so that we could bring it to festival so everybody else could try it. So this beer you can't even buy in the store. You can can't only, even buy it. You can only get it at the beer store. That's what it looks like. It's not an avocado. I, <laughs> I thought it was for a second, but... What, what is that? Is it cherry on the front? Yeah, um, cherry and a little bug. Yeah, so it's you know giving homage to uh, the different sort of berries that we're using in there and all the different bugs that are in there, the yeast and the bacteria, to give you all those interesting flavors. What style of beer is this? Technically, it's called a wild ale. Wild ale. Yeah. It's a little tough to categorize. Before, we're not getting caught up in the nomenclature. 
very interesting. It definitely does taste wild, though. I will give them that. Weedy. Is it weed? Is, it, is that how you would describe it? It's kind of weedy. Uh, yeah. It's got a lot of that like nice fruit character to it. A lot of that strawberry, almost like jam. A lot of people when they yes, smell it the first it. time, they're like, "Ooh, that smells like jam." Very Hold specifically. On. ADD. We have an Eastern Conference Finals jersey in front of us. <laughs> All right. You don't just see this on an everyday occasion. No, you don't. Yeah. Eastern Conference. That's a great jersey Thank right you. there. Was that the was that the Boston um, All Star Game jersey? It's the, the whole Eastern Conference, but yeah, Boston. Like, yeah, Boston, yeah, that's great. I love it. It's that's like a like NHL '94 style. Like, that's why I uh, bought it. That's amazing. That's great. It's pretty, pretty great. <laughs> it's good. Thanks. <laughs> We're, we're drinking the bugs and bugs and berries. Bugs and berries. I keep wanting to say bugs bunny, but it's <laughs> a little bit different. Very unique. Very unique. Yeah, I, I like. This very a lot. interesting. We love when we brew stuff up with like other companies that are coming over and coming all the way from Europe. With Keller coming over here to brew this up. That's a really awesome experience. They're over here for like a week, hanging out at the brewery, brewing it up. Cool. The one in, in, in Jamaica Plain, right? Yeah. yeah, right down the street on the Orange Line. Yeah. So tell everyone what's going on at Jamaica Plain because you just did yesterday the um, the barbecue which we featured yeah. as the Big daily pick on FOMO description. Yeah, so uh, we like to have events like that with like the pig roast, uh, so anything like that really to bring in uh, members of the community, people from uh, further out as well. We like to debut some pretty cool beers, have some cool food. Um, but basically what we're doing over there is mostly research and development, working on new beers, uh, brand new styles, collaborations that all gets done there smaller batch brewing a lot of it never leaves the brewery sometimes it's not so great so we got to dump it and try again uh, that's what it's all about we're able to do smaller batches so there's a lot less waste there as well I don't believe there's bad beer coming out of there I think that's why <laughs> um, Sam Adams is doing great stuff stay tuned with them I, I think definitely give them some love and you guys are doing the um, tours every weekend, correct? Uh, every day, except every for day. Sunday. Yeah, every day except for Sunday. Um, start around 9.30ish, go until about 3 o'clock every day. Saturday is definitely the busier, uh, kind of more fun days for sure. Though. If people want to get there from downtown, what, what do they take? They take the Orange Line? Orange Line, the Stony Brook stop. Uh, get off there and it's one block away pretty much. There's a big sign that says Sam Adams Brewery this way. It's pretty cool. Check Great. it out for sure. <laughs> hey, I appreciate it. You no know, problem. Sam Adams doing cool. Wait, so we even try? We didn't try all the beers. We only had one beer. Yeah, you've only tried one. We got to, We got two more to go. Yeah, for sure. Right. Well, we'll get you some KMF Grand Crew. For all right, sure. we're gonna do KMF. <laughs> you need, we need some microphone distance here. That's good. <laughs> all right. There you go. So we're gonna we're gonna flip. Just kind of a quick little peek here. This is the afternoon session. So we have the KMF, which stands for Cosmic Mother Funk with an N in there. Yeah. This is a sour beer. Yes. It, it tastes, tastes sour. sour. <laughs> it tastes sour. How do we describe it? I, I'm kind of at a loss of words. So we described a lot, there's a lot of fruity notes in there. Um, yeah, it sometimes takes a couple of sips, a couple of smells to go in there and actually find them. Um, a lot of like tart fruit, like red apples or sour cherries, that sort of thing. Uh, definitely some of the spice in there as well, coming from all the yeast and the different bacteria that are in there. Uh, the real key thing with the Grand Cru that separates it from our regular KMF is we're adding some be Belgian candy sugar in there. Hold on. Just gonna balance out the sour and give it a little bit more sweetness. You threw out Grand Cru, I'm a big wine guy. Yep. What does that mean, Grand Cru in the beer scene? So Grand Cru, it means pretty much the same thing. It's the like top notch, the sort of like the ultimate that we're making, really. Um, you'll see that in cheese too, as long, along with the wine. Um, and it can mean a lot of different things depending on which which like industry that you're looking at. But here with beer, it just means that it's kind of like our up, upper echelon. Um, and it differentiates it from like our raw uh, KMF, which doesn't have any of that Belgian candy sugar in. And that's not used to really serve and for people to drink. Um, that one is usually used uh, as a blending beer. So we'll blend that into styles like our Barrel Room Collection in different proportions to give it that sour aspect. Uh. So we usually use the KMF for a blending beer, but um, every year we like to release it 
as its own drinkable beer. So we add in some of that Belgian candy sugar to balance out that sour, give it a little bit of sweetness, and then it's, it's a lot more palatable that way. For you guys at home, this is what it tastes like. It's like when you eat about 20 uh, Sour Patch Kids at once, and then, as he described, some fruit like kicks in and it's no, it's no longer sour. So there's like a balance. Like you get that little pungent kind of thing going on, and then a little more fruit. It's interesting. It's not like any beers you're drinking. Come, another uh, reason why you should come up to the Beer Summit, try something different. Uh, sour beer, it's kind of like the trend in the industry, right? Definitely. Uh, it's been big over on the West Coast for the past couple of years for sure. Starting to make its way over to the East Coast now, and when you walk around here, you'll see a lot of sour beers going on around here. I'm sure that you've found some already. Probably will find a lot more as well. Not true. I haven't found them yet? This is the first one I've had. Oh, man. I know I've also, some around. we've been selective about the ones we've kind of bounced around to, yeah. but this is the first one. There are definitely some other sours out there today. Um, I'm not sure exactly where, but I've heard a couple people talking about them as they come up. Um, but yeah, definitely a big thing, big up and coming sort of style of beer, sours for sure. Okay, cool. You've got one more to try. One more. Black Wait. Harbor Stout is the last one. Can you get us some stout? I want to make sure I get the ingredients correct here. So, um, <laughs> reading off my notes here a little bit. He's oh, cheating. All right. Cheating a little. Up until this point. It's all very, firm, head, yeah. very firm on his knowledge. I just want to make sure I get all the special ingredients just in there. Just in case Jim is watching at home. Just, just in case. Uh, we He's got... knowing everything up until this point. <laughs> and I still think he knows his stuff, but he got nervous in front of the live stream. Well, I, was, I just want to get all of them. So we got black pepper in there, smoked black pepper, Tahitian and I... Madagascar bourbon vanilla beans, roasted cocoa nibs, and coffee beans. This is like, if you like coffee, this is probably the ultimate coffee beer. Is there caffeine in this too? Probably a little bit, just from the cocoa beans. Some of it is going to ooze out and into the beer, but not a ton. This caffeine. is like an ex this is definitely like an espresso. I don't wanna I don't know if I wanna say espresso martini, but that's <laughs> what you're drinking in this beer. Yeah, I will say it's eleven percent. Yeah. So go easy on that one. <laughs> one of our bigger beers for sure. It's a foolish mistake I've made all day long. We never do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what was it? This is called Black Harbor Stout? Black Harbor Stout, yeah. All right. So we're going to show you it real quick. We're going to put a bottle in it, too. Oh, you got a bottle? Yep. Here, let's see the bottle. Distributed in Massachusetts, I'm sure, right? Only at the brewery, actually. Oh, yep. Only at the brewery. So we will send this beer in kegs to some of our local accounts. Um, but if you want to sit and take it home, actually ha got to come to the brewery um, down in Jamaica Plain again, right off the Stony, uh, Stony Brook Tea Stop on the Orange Line, and we got it for sale in bottles there. You can also get the KMF there, although that might be sold out in the next couple of days because we're almost out of that. Who are the lucky accounts that receive this beer in Boston? I'm not sure about the specific accounts that are getting Black Harbor Stout. I'm not sure about that. I don't know either. But no, I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> All right. I think we need to take a time out. We've been, we've been live for like an hour and a half. Sam Adams, actually almost two hours now. Incredible. Nice. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Always doing good stuff. Come out to the Beer Summit, beersummit.com, 5.30. They have another session. And check out, I'm from FOMO, I'm Max. I'm from FOMOprescription.com. Check out our newsletter. We highlight seven most interesting events. Focus on young professionals, career, health, and social roles. And we'll see you out there. I'm enjoying the beer fest. You should be here. It is the FOMO Prescription Daily Pick. <laughs>